Well, as a matter of fact, I grew up in Glendale, California, and there is an arts and music library just up the hill from my house called Brand Library. And it was a beautiful private home built with a Moorish influence, and it had become this fantastic library. And it was my consolation all the time I was in high school. I would uh, head up there and read books on art and artists and check out records, and that's where I got my entire liberal education, which meant a lot in a stultifying place like Glendale. So I, I credit that particular library with providing me with something more than consolation and inspiration. It really gave me a view of a wider world outside the tiny world that my family inhabited. And, uh, it was a lifesaver. I can't say enough about it. Well, uh, we uh, live near one of those beautiful Carnegie designed libraries. And my wife and I go down there regularly. We, uh, I rent, check out books on tape to listen to while I work. I listen to a lot of recorded stuff while I'm working. And we ch check out videos and things to watch. And of course, we check out books. We don't buy books anymore. We get them at the library because we ran out of bookshelf spells, shapes, bookshelf space. So uh, being able to just go and plus the libraries here in Seattle, they're really responsive. You ask them to purchase a book, and frequently they'll get it and they'll save it for you. And you know, it's just a wonderful situation. Well, uh, it is an issue here. We've had library closures that have that have been shocking, frankly, because you think of libraries as being sacrosanct. And I, you know, I'm from a time when public schools were strong and good, and libraries were wonderful and quiet. And, uh, I, uh, I don't know what happened to change that, but I, I wish the, the sort of, uh, I don't know what to think of it, the pro-civics attitude that used to make people regard libraries as indispensable would come back. It always backfires, doesn't it? You, could, you can't get better publicity for a book than banning it. And I think everybody, history always shows that people try to ban books or misguided zealots at best. They're always, they're always shown to be wrong after the passage of time. Always. There's never a book banning that, that was, came to be thought of as a good thing by reasonable people. So, uh, I don't know. As long as the fools want to keep making sure those books succeed, they got to keep trying to ban them. Well, my current project is a, what they call a graphic novel now. It's just a big, long comic book. And it's a sequel to this book that I put out last year called Congress of the Animals, and it's a wordless fable that uh, has in it a lot of things that are impossible to describe in words, let alone pictures, so it's a real challenge. But uh, that kind of heavy lifting keeps me in fight and trim, keeps the spirit alive, keeps me fresh and vigorous.